Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and the Skaven modders are awakening from their hibernation, which means a new faction mod. Yep, we've got a totally new mod which implements clan Verms. So as you might be aware, all the Skaven clans are actually quite different to each other, especially if you read through the heraldry book and so on. Many of them will take up their own type of playstyle, their own culture and so on, which was sadly not represented in the tabletop. But modders are doing this for Total War Warhammer 3, and we've got a bunch of things to talk about with this mod. To give you a little bit of a gist of it, if you like bugs, you're gonna like this, and I mean actual insects, not game bugs. But let's just read over the faction effects and the lord effects because there's a lot to talk about about. Capturing Skaven capital cities reduces the cost and upkeep of non verb units. So, as you can see here, there's a very high upkeep cost, we'll get to that in a second, but as long as you expand and you take out, you know, the other major Skaven clans, well, you're going to be in a pretty good position. Access to the breeding hives to recruit verminous units. Diplomatic relations minus 60 with Skaven. Yeah, you're going to be fighting a lot of Skaven. Loyalty minus 9 for non-clan verms lords faction-wide. This means that you're not going to be able to get yourself graciers and stuff, you're going to have to focus on another Lord option. Income from trade tariffs plus 100% faction-wide, trade is going to be quite useful. Tradable resources produced plus 100% faction-wide. Construction costs plus 300% for all non-verms military buildings. Recruitment costs for plus 300% for all non-verms units, all armies. And finally, upkeep plus 300% for all non-verms units, all armies. Don't worry, as I said earlier on, you can actually reduce this, so don't you worry too much about that. And then if we go into the Lord effects for this character, leadership and melee attack plus one for clan verbs units for each active war against the Skaven faction wide. And finally, gain following for three turns after declaring war on a Skaven faction. And the success chance plus 25% for all armies. Replenishment rate plus 15% for all units. Charge bonus plus eight for all units. And and Clan Verm's recruitment costs minus 50% for Lord's Army. As you can tell, there are a lot of bonuses, and this is because you're going to need a lot of help at the very beginning. And we're going to jump right into the campaign now. Uh, I'm going to be using a cheat mod just to be able to showcase stuff, because I've been playing this for a few hours. And if I sound a little bit weird, it's because I've been dealing with a hell of a flu lately, and it's just, well... It's, it's kind of winning. Anyways, this campaign is going to be rather interesting as you're starting off in possibly one of the biggest war zones that you can imagine. You're going to be fighting against Clan Vulcan, who's going to have a pretty strong army right at you. This is not going to be an easy start. Clan uh, Rictus is also declaring war on you. But obviously keep in mind that all the other Skaven factions pretty much hate you and the Dwarf factions will naturally hate you too. In fact, your only real possible ally in this location is going to be Greenskins, and uh, yeah, you can't really trust the Greenskins too much either. This is not going to be an easy campaign, but I think it's what gives it its charm, as there's just a lot to do. Now, when we start looking towards the Legendary Lord, your character's unique skill line is actually quite interesting, as it's going to focus on boosting up your faction quite heavily. In fact, there's a certain point where you can get a lot of food generated faction-wide, and I think that this is going to help you just be your own Skaven. Clan Verms themselves in law are hated pretty much by every other faction, so I think this kind of works quite well to solidify yourself as your own rat. Now, like I said, Clan Vulcan is coming for you and you're basically a Skaven Rebellion here, so you're going to be suffering. Early on, they've got a pretty strong army. It's up to you if you're going to meet them head on, if you're going to wait a little bit. But it's definitely an army which will do a lot of damage to you. It's going to be a hard campaign for the start, but it'll get easier. And it'll get easier because you'll have a fancy new mechanic, taking from Rakaf's mechanic. So if you decide to get into combat throughout various different regions, you'll be able to unlock some units that you can instantly recruit. These are various types of bugs that we're going to talk about a little bit later on, but it's a pretty fun thing because depending where you're fighting is depending what you're getting. And I like the idea of it because it gives you some variety. Obviously, you'll still have some other units that you'll be able to play with, and that will be very obvious when you start looking towards the construction and as everything will more or less still be the same. Everything is very skaven -y. However, you have replaced your building that gives you clan rats and so on. Uh, this now gives you different types of units, you know. Uh, scuttlers and various different types of clan verms inspired skaven, including a new hero. We're going to talk about them all in a little bit. And I think this kind of works out quite well because this is going to be your main force attached to the other bugs until you can start reducing the upkeep of other types of factions. Now, obviously, you're going to be focused 
focusing on a new style of play, you're not going to be using the generic lord options that you already have access to, like the Master Assassin and so on. Instead, you're going to want to use the Swarm Leader. Now, the Swarm Leader itself is a Clans Verms exclusive, and it's pretty cool, actually. I really enjoy how this works. It's a melee-based character, very similar to that of the Warlord, but it's got a few different buffs here and there, and even able to summon in some other creatures, which I think is really cool. It also looks amazing. I love the uh, the Chitin armor and weapons and so on. It just gives it a different visual feel. Uh, this is why I've always liked these types of mods, especially when it comes from modders that uh, I know so well that really put a lot of effort into it. And you just get a massive amount of quality from these dudes. This is obviously Stratovarius, Hykrul, Finn, Dead Baron, and All is Dust. They're just absolutely awesome creators. And as can be expected for your Swarm Leader and also your Legendary Lord, you will have access to a red skill line which will boost up your bugs and all the other new units that you'll have access to. So this means that you're going to be able to make them quite useful later on in campaign. I've been playing for a few hours uh, before recording this video, and to be honest, they do last for a decent amount of time before you start needing some extra stuff being mixed in. Now, there's something even cooler here, which is a new type of hero known as the Swarm Caller, and it's really interesting because it's basically got the concept of a pack master that's able to buff up your creatures and so on, which is obviously quite helpful as, you know, you need these things to last, especially your Clan Verms units. They're going to be something that you're going to really heavily rely on during your campaign. Campaign. Again, I can't stress this enough that it is a different style of Skaven play, which I'm very much enjoying as I'm going on and playing uh, through my own time. But also, there's a little bit more. You see, it's got a law of magic, which isn't really a law, but I understand why it's done with Winds of Magic and so on, because it's probably balancing issues. But you've got a few buffs, like, you know, being able to... Because you've got access to some debuffs, you've got access to some summons, and it all kind of fits. I like the idea of making this kind of like a Winds of Magic, just so you don't overly use this and abuse this, because, yeah, like, being able to summon in too much will add to a little bit of abuse. But I, I really like this. I think this is a really good system. It's uh, not too powerful, but then again, this isn't supposed to be very powerful. This isn't a major clan. It's one of those minor ones. And yeah, system is good. Honestly, the system is very, very good. Anyways, let's start looking towards the roster itself. So you do get a decent sized roster. We're not going to go over the characters because we've already done so. Uh, but I do want to appreciate the look. The weapons are freaking awesome. Again, visually, very, very big thing. And it's so different to what we've already seen from normal Skaven clans. But it still fits. This is very lore friendly. So I really, really do like this. But when we start looking towards the actual units, the first ones will be the Lantern Lighters. You know, these are very much like Skaven slaves. Uh, they've got spears, they've got decent armor, I mean for Skaven at the very least, you know. Um, yeah, they're a meat shield. They're not great units, they're going to be one of your most early ones, uh, but they'll get the job done at least once you start supplementing them with, you know, uh, some spiders, some scorpions, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You'll start off very weak, like I said very early on into the video, but as you start progressing you'll get stronger and stronger, so don't you worry, this is going to be more of a challenge than anything else. Scotlers are basically Skaven slaves with just a little bit of a range attack. They've also got access to Vanguard though, so it's not too bad. I mean, it's not great either, but again, very early units that is supposed to just get you started more than anything else. There is a second version of the Scuttlers which have access to spider silk globes. These are going to slow down your enemies a little bit, reduce their uh, melee defense a little bit, which I think is kind of cool. Overall, it's a different style of play which is going to rely on you kind of doing more hit and run tactics, I think, or getting them from the side with your big monsters. And it fits with the theme. Again, it's quite important, but you'll notice that the style is very very different right same thing with the uh, worm oil singers these are going to be able to uh, get a little bit of fire damage in which is kind of nice especially if you're going to be dealing with other skaven which have got access to you know regeneration through you know the big monsters and type of stuff this is just going to give you a little bit of an edge and you're going to need it early on you're going to be a weak faction at least that's how i've been feeling it myself uh, but yeah it's still cool and you've got a little bit more here so obviously the vermin keepers themselves uh, really, really cool looking unit. Really, really, really cool looking unit. And these act more like pack masters. They'll be able to heal up your creatures and so on, uh, which I kind of like. I love the idea 
of a squad of pack masters because it just really fits with how they were kind of represented in the tabletop. So I think this is a really interesting way of doing it. If we start looking towards the actual vermin units, the first one we have is the Rat Swarm. If you remember this from the tabletop, you'll remember that, uh, yeah, it's a tar pit. It's not a great unit, it's just there to hold down the enemy, but, I mean... Rat swarms, right? I have loads of those on the 40 mil bases, they're so cool. And every now and then you will need a tar pit unit, it's a meat shield, it's expendable, decent stats for what it is. You will find yourself actually using them fairly often if you're going for a bit of a theme here. I believe these were made by Chaos Robbie. Same thing by the giant rats. The giant rats are a bit better stat wise. They're going to be very much on par with clan rats, uh, mostly because, well, that's how it works on the tabletop. Believe it or not, giant rats were actually relatively useful. The fact that they've got armor sundering too are just really cool. I've got the rat swarms right behind so you can see how big these giant rats are. Uh, I love the size of them. They're just absolutely massive. And, uh, you know, it's a staple for Skaven, right? You want giant rats because it just fits with everything. The Great Under Empire Bat is actually going to be a pretty interesting single entity unit for you as it's going to give you supremacy over the skies. Sure, it's not going to be on par with like a griffin or something, but the idea is having something that flies around very quickly, 110 speed is nothing to laugh at, and it's going to be able to take out any single targets without too much of an issue. Use this to kind of knock down any heroes, any spellcasters, which might not be surrounded or protected. You've also got some pretty Pretty good effects. It's got fear too. It's Vanguard, which I think is freaking awesome. Like overall, really cool unit. I love the idea of it. And it's something that I've been using in my armies a lot, really. I've been using it quite a bit. Anyways, when we start moving on, we've got some uh, Under Empire Scorpions. So these are kind of like clan rats in a sense they're still pretty good you know they're expendable they've got poison attacks they've got stalk which is going to be quite useful they're not really animated right now but it's just like how it works with the constructs for the tomb kings so once you actually engage into battle they'll start actually moving you've got quite a lot here especially when you start looking towards like for, say for example the um spider hatchlings and i really like these uh they're even stronger i actually use them as a mainstay unit i think uh because they're just pretty good overall. Poison Tax 2. Uh, they've got Expendable. Decent stats. Better armor. Love the coloring on them. The black and yellow is really, really pretty. It's actually what I've been thinking of painting up some of my own spiders recently uh, for the tabletop. So, yeah, I might take this as inspiration. Giant Spiders come in also, and they're pretty good. They've got really good stats. 70 armor is nothing to laugh at. They've got armor piercing. They've got uh, poison attacks. You're going to be dealing with a lot of storm vermin. You're going to be dealing with a lot of dwarfs. It's not going to take too long for the dwarfs to start turning their attentions to you. So definitely something that you're going to want around to deal with some very heavy armor. And again, coloring is just awesome. I know it's not important, but uh, if the unit looks cool, it kind of gives you more reason to play. Or at least that's how I kind of think about it anyway. Uh, you've also got some under Empire Bats, kind of like the big one, but smaller entity size, a lot weaker. You're already used to Bats anyway if you've played, say, for example, obviously the uh, Vampire Counts or the Vampire Coast. So use them exactly the same way. Uh, pick out an enemy war machine which has been straggling and just rip it apart. Under Empire Flies will be quite interesting. You see, they've got poison attacks and they're expendable and they act like your very basic pests. They're very fast too, so you can kind of switch and mix and match with the bats if you like. Uh, I kind of like these, honestly. I really like the concept of giant flies. Obviously, it's using the model from the Nurgle Rot Flies, but uh, I mean... It wouldn't be out of the question if you're messing around with insects to try and make giant flies too, to give you some aerial supremacy. Uh, we've also got access to the giant scorpion, which we're not going to talk about too much because it's very much similar to that of the one that you've got access to in the Tomb Kings. But it gives you a nice big monster. There's also the Arachnorok spider, but unfortunately I've got no footage of that. And I'll be very honest with you, I am dealing with a pretty bad fever right now. Uh, this is just something that I want to talk about because I've been playing around with it to relax, really. When I'm not feeling great, I like to play a little bit of Total War. And this is the perfect time because this faction mod dropped uh, just uh, the same day as the Stallion one, I think, actually. Uh, but either way, let me tell you about this mod, right? Uh, it's definitely very different. It's definitely going to be a faction that is going to be a lot harder to get used to at the very beginning, even though you're still playing as Skaven. But it's good. This is the thing, right? Uh, when you're getting variety with a Skaven, especially knowing the Skaven law so well that each of the clans are so drastically different, or at least a large majority of them, 
having different playstyles, having the bugs to recruit, I really like the idea of using Rakoff's mechanic. It's actually really, really fun. What you're seeing here is a battle where I've got an army that I had to make up myself, more or less what I was using in campaign, versus a randomly generated uh, orc army. I actually think it's the same one that I used against the Stallion faction, but what you can tell here is I'm not waiting. Unlike in most cases where I've got some gunpowder and stuff, here I'm using a lot of creatures. I don't have access to warp fire throwers. I don't have access to play claw cool catapults, so I need to be aggressive. I need to use my summons too, and I need to make sure that I am as aggressive as possible and I'm overwhelming my enemy forces. I'll be very honest with you, your monsters will be kind of weak until you start boosting them up, that is. But yeah, they will be very weak and you will have to change around. You're going to be playing Skaven, kind of like how the Skaven played on the tabletop, which wasn't using a lot of weaponry, but rather swarming them with numbers and being able to surround them. And yeah, it's actually made me a little nostalgic for the tabletop. Even though Clan Worms was never a playable army, it's the same playstyle. Just hordes and hordes and hordes and just trying to rip apart your enemy before they can eventually break you. Honestly, I must say I had a lot of fun. It's been a bit difficult because of the fever and so on, but I must say that, uh, yeah, it was really enjoyable. Again, I don't know why I'm saying that because at the end of the day, these modders have always been known for absolutely stupendous quality. So... Anytime I see one of their mods pop up, it's like, oh yeah, this is going to be good anyway. There's definitely something that you should check out, especially if you like the Skaven and you want something different. It will be linked in the description below. Let me know what you guys think about Clan Worms. Funny enough, we only recently covered Clan Worms in the lesser known Skaven clans. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Is this more or less what you guys had in your heads as an interpretation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and uh, have a good day. I'll let the rest of the battle play out so you can check it out. See how difficult this is. It's actually a bit of a longer fight as um, yeah, I did have to suffer a little bit. That obeys me, yes? Pack. 
Voila! Good! Now kill! Beast Trainer! Beast's cower tremble! War Beast's hunger! Gouge slash! Mimi! 